Hello, the next uh, worksheet is available from www.eclassroom.co.za. We are busy with Mathematical Literacy Grade 11 Worksheet for Finance. Um, f uh, this is available from to Enable's website week uh, week 14 of finance already. Um, we are done with questions 1, 2 and 3. It is available with the previous uh, video. We are now going to start with question number 4. Right, please remember to first do the question before you look at this video, otherwise you will not get the most out of this activity. Holiday to Mauritius, but he doesn't have enough money and his side he will go to the bank and take out a loan. Not a wise, wise choice. Uh, Johan, you do not uh, borrow money to go on holiday. He goes to visit three banks. And they all give him different loan terms as shown in the table below. Use this information to answer the questions that follow. Note that Bank A has a minimum loan amount that they offer Johan. And uh, Johan's trip costs approximately 24000 He has 10000 saved up. Alright. So how much money will Johan pay back in total for each loan? Right now remember in mathematics in grade 9 we use this formula but in in mathematical literacy we don't use the formula and um, we use uh, we add the interest it's compound interest but we add the interest onto the previous month. So I'm going to show you an alternative method to the one in the memo. Right so bank A is 20,000 at 7% over 30 months, he pays it off. Bank B is 14,000 of 8,2% uh, over 48 months, and Bank C is 14%, 9% per annum over 36 months. Right. So um, this is the calculation, the alternative calculation. So if he borrows 20,000 rand from the, bank, from the bank at 7% interest, 7% interest is 1,400 rand. If you add that to 20,000, you will pay 21,400. You start the next month with 21,400. 21, you add 7% onto that. That's 1,498 rand. And that's 22,000 nine hundred and ninety eight rand now you're only going to because it's only 30 months it's two years and six months you start the half a year with twenty two thousand eight hundred and ninety eight rand you add seven hundred and eighty seven rand eighty eight cents onto that and you end up with twenty three thousand six hundred and eighty five rand eighty eight cents bank b bought, lent him fourteen thousand rand 8,2 percent is 1,148 rand, and that added to the balance is 15,148 rand. So you start the second year with 15, 15,148 rand. 8,2 percent interest is 1,242 rand 14 cents, and that is 1,600 and 16,390 rand 14 cents so you start the third year with 16,390 and 14 cents times by 8,2 percent that's a 1,343 rand 99 cents you end the third year with 17,734 rand 13 cents so you start the fourth year with that Times by 8,2 percent is 1,454 and 20 cents. So then you end up uh, having to repay 19,188 and 33 cents. Okay, balance C, 14,000. You uh, uh, pay. Uh, pay 9% interest is 1,260 Rand and you end up having to repay at the end of the first year 15,260 Rand. You start with 15,260, you, uh, re you add 9, uh, you work out what 9% on that is, it's 1,373 Rand 40 cents. These two added together is 16,633 Rand 40 cents. Then you start the third year with 16,633 and 40 cents times by 9% is 1,497 and 1 cents. Added together, these two amounts is 18,130 rand 
and 40 cents. Okay, let's continue with the worksheet. Okay, so how much money will Johan pay back in total for each loan? And we just saw these amounts. 23, 6, 8, 5 and 88 cents, 19, 1, 8, 8 and 33 cents and 18, 1, 3, 0 and 41 cents. Coincidentally, if you get a question like this, uh, this is a lot of calculations. Um, you, you won't get a question that has that many aspects to it in an exam, for instance. What are the monthly installment for each loan? For the answers in the table below. Okay, so now we've calculated these amounts. We divide, let's just zoom in a bit. Um, zoom to page width. Okay, so you divide the 23, 6, 8, 5, and 88 cents by 30, and you get 7, 8, 9, and 53 cents. You divide 19188.33 by 48, you get 399 and 76 cents. And you divide 18, 1, 30, and 41 cents by 36, and you get 503 rand 62 cents. Johan speaks to a friend who is a financial planner who advised him to took a long uh, uh, to look at how long it will take to save up to go on the trip. He knows that Johan can get an interest of twelve percent. Calculate how long it will take Johan to save up the money um, to go on holiday. If he invests ten thousand at twelve percent and every six months he add two thousand seven hundred rand, four hundred and fifty times six, and is that is save each month to a lump sum. You can use the same formula as above. Okay, so now this is the compound interest formula that is used. Okay, so um, you can again start with a table. Okay, but um, if you use the compound f formula, um, you will you will start with five thousand six hundred, add two seven. And then it will amount to that at 27 and it amounts to that okay so we're not going to go into that as it's uh, quite difficult and I think it's beyond this uh, spec of mathematical literacy even that's quite a creative question okay so which option would you recommend John based on the loans and saving figures uh, that he worked out and knowing that he doesn't need to take a holiday right away give a reason for your answer okay so this is so you might be given all these uh, calculations all these answers okay so it took him after f the fourth time that he saved that amount he has 21,225 rand and 73 cents at the end of the second year when Johan adds his um, 21,625,072 um, that he invested to his 2,700 that he saved, he will have enough money to go on holiday. So that's around about 25,000 rand. So it's um, that's the fit. So I would recommend that Johan should save up for two years and then go on a holiday because he started with 10,000 rand and he will only have to save 450 rand per month for 24 months, which means he would only spend 20,800 on total in his holiday. If he loans money, he will end up paying more for his holiday than the cost of the holiday, which is a fantastic answer. Okay, so just remember you won't ever in an exam get such an extensive question. Um, it is a fantastic question, however. Okay, question number five. Felicity works for ABC Electronics Company and she want as and she has got a job offer from Magic Electronics. She wants to compare the salary at each company to decide whether she should take the new job at Magic Electronics based on which income is higher. Okay, so for the ABC Electronics, this is a pay slip. So the um, Uh, gross salary is 20,000, overtime pay is 2,500, total pay is 22,500. The medical aid allowance is 2,130, it's 5% of a salary, and she also receives a travel allowance of 2,850, which amounts to 5,980. The deductions is the medical aid, 
a retirement fund is 1250 and the tax amount is 3699 and 25 cents so that is 3 6000 399.25 cents. The total amount payable to the employer is 16,180.75 cents. Um, Magic Electronics uh, offer Felicity a total package of 29,000 per month. CTC means that this amount um, is the amount that the employee will get paid before the tax. She will still will still pay the same total amount for medical aid and retirement fund. Calculate how much tax Felicity would pay if she worked at Malik Electronics if she was taxed at 19%. Okay, so let's look at the memo. 29,000 times 19% is 5510. Uh, calculate how much ABC Electronics contributes to Felicity, Felicity's retirement fund each month. Okay, so it's a gross salary times 5%, so it's 20,000 times 5%, and that's 1,000. Calculate uh, what is the total cost of Felicity's medical aid. So it's what the company contributes plus what she contributes. So that's 3,500 Rand. Calculate um, the total cost of Felicity's retirement fund. So it's 1,000 plus 1,250 and that is 2,250. And then uh, how much money will Felicity come home with at the end of the month if she were to take the job? at Magic Electronics. Okay, so you take the 29,000 and you subtract the um, tax and the medical aid and the retirement fund. So she comes home with 17,740 Rand. Calculate the difference between Felicity earns at ABC Electronics and what she could earn at Magic Electronics. Okay, so Magic Electronics offer her 17,740. She earns 16,180.75. So the difference is 1,559.25 cents. And then question G, which job should Felicity take? Give a reason for your answer. Um, she should take Magic Electronics because she will earn more money. Even though they don't have such good benefits, then... Um, the monthly salary is that much higher, 1,559.25 after she has uh, paid the medical aid and retirement and the taxes herself. Okay, and then question C. Ach, six. Jonathan owns a clothing company that sells dresses. He sells each dress for 150 rand and it costs him 45 rand to make a dress. His company has a fixed cost of 2,400. Draw a graph to represent profit and cost for the clothing company. Okay. Okay, before we look at the graph, let's just look at the table first because remember in mathematical literacy, we always have to start or we could, we always expect it to start from a table first. Right, so if you don't sell any dresses, you still have to pay a 2,400 Rand um, expense in a month. If you make 10 dresses, remember, it costs uh, 45 Rand to manufacture a dress. So you go 45 times by 10. Okay, that's a time sign, sorry. Times by 10, and that gives you 450 Rand. So you'll take that 450 Rand, and that you'll plus to 2,400. So that's how you get to 2,850. The same with 22 dresses. So it's 22 times 45 rand plus 2,400. 23 times 45 plus 2,400. 80 times 45 plus 2,400 gives you 6,000. 6, and 100 times 45 is 4,500 plus 2,400 gives you 6,900. Okay, 
So if you don't sell any dresses, you don't make any money. If you sell 10 dresses, 10 times 150 is 1,500 rand. Um, 22 times 150 is 3,300. 23 times 150 is 3,450. 80 times 150 is 12,000. And 100 times 150 is 15,000. Okay, now let's go. Um, let's go back to the to the um, the questions. Okay, we have to draw a graph. Now let, this is the graph. Um, okay, here's the graph. So you pay two thousand four hundred, and then that's the expense graph, and this is the income graph. Um, then the break-even point is that point there. But let's quickly look at that table again. Do you see that between oh, at 22, the cost is still 90 Rand more than the income. But as soon as you manufacture and sell 23 dresses, you, uh, you made a 15 Rand income. You start make, started to make a profit. Okay, so at... Um, at uh, f just more than 22, almost 23, you find your break-even point. Um, how many dresses must a company sell to start making a profit? So that's at 23 dresses. Remember, they, they start making a 15 rand profit. They would need to sell 23 dresses before they start making a profit. You cannot sell a part of a dress. Okay, so even very small dresses still be considered a whole dress. Calculate how much income the, the company will earn if they sold 100 des dresses in one month. Now let's, you can read it from the graph or you can calculate it, read it from your table. So at 100 dresses is 6,900 rand is the cost and the income is 15,000 rand. So 15,000 minus 6,900 Sorry, the income is is a thousand five hundred rand. Um, calculate the total profit they make. Okay, so that's what I did just now. So it's fifteen thousand minus the expense, which was a uh, what did I say six thousand nine hundred. So that's a eight thousand one hundred rand profit if they sell a hundred dresses. Then question. If Jonathan gets an order from a company in the United States, they order 80 dresses at 150 Rand each. If the Rand is 10 Rand and 2 cents to the do dollar, how much will the order be worth in dollars? Okay, so 80 dresses times 150 Rand is 12,000 Rand. If you take the 12,000 Rand and you divide it by 10 Rand and 2 cents, it's a thousand one hundred and ninety seven rand sixty cents. We will get to exchange rate later on in grade eleven. Then this question F might more make more sense for you. But that is the end of the worksheet. Thank you very much. It's also the end of finance and uh, good luck with the test tomorrow.